Hello, friends, and welcome back. I am excited about this one today. It is the new Epiphone Prophecy SG. And this is the first one, after all this time, I've been able to get into my hands because we had so many pre-orders. We're just now getting some that we can keep in stock at the store. Uh, the entire Prophecy line will be rolling in, but these are the first ones that hit. And check out this gorgeous, gorgeous guitar. The first thing, when I got a chance to plug this in and play with it a little bit, it made me feel, I don't know, I guess almost sad in a little ways for companies like Gibson who rely so much on their legacy and the customers demand so much consistency. They want them, you know, they, they want their history to be continued on and on into the future. And you know me, I love my old Les Pauls, but can you imagine if somebody told Ford Motor Company, you have to make cars exactly the way you did 65 years ago because those are the best cars that were ever made. What, what would life be like today? And this is one of those uh, guitars that if it had Gibson on the headstock, the torches and pitchforks would probably be outside of the factory because this is an SG for 2021. Let me tell you about it. First of all, the body. You know SG's got to have a mahogany body, but this one has a half inch maple cap on the top and then some beautiful flame maple veneer on top of that. Um, one of the things that it's done is if you've ever been one of those people who, you know, were concerned about neck dives and the SG body was, you know, extremely light and the balance on this is perfect. It's a tad bit heavier. This guitar, eight pounds, nothing wrong with that. I'll wear that all night long. Um, but just everything about it is just gorgeous. Uh, it, we have mahogany neck on here, an ebony fretboard. We've got uh, 24 jumbo frets on here. Did you hear me? I said 24, and I love that. I love 24 fret guitars, not because I spend that much time up on the double octave E, but everything else is so easy to get to. And on this guitar, because it's an SG and because of the way that they did the heel on this, boy, th this is nothing, getting up here at the very top of the neck. Just a joy to play. The ebony fretboard on here is just phenomenal. The asymmetrical slim taper neck carve, you just have to feel it to understand. It's great. And just a beautiful job on the inlays on this ebony board. Uh, they've got block and triangle with the abalone triangle in the center. And the abalone is dyed to complement the body color on these. Just a gorgeous touch. The binding on here, headstock and neck bound on here, it's just gorgeous. The Loctone two-piece tunomatic and tailpiece. And then we've got to talk about the pickups. No, before we talk about the pickups, we got Grover locking tuners up on here. Uh, just super nice. Okay, now, that stuff. Let's get to the exciting stuff. An SG with Fishman Fluence pickups in it. And you heard a little bit what these do at full bore in the intro there. Um, and I know everybody wants to hear these dirty before you hear them clean. So with all the effects unplugged, just going into our Fillmore 50 back here, um, Got a bit of gain on it, not a whole lot. I'm on the high gain channel. The gain's only cranked up about 10 o'clock or so, playing through this beautiful Friedman 412 cabinet back here. But check it out. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, before we go any deeper into this, I think it's worth taking a look at active pickups in general. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think a lot of us players decided a long time ago whether we were in that camp or not in that camp. Uh, back when active pickups were developed and they were being used a lot by 
primarily heavy metal players and bass players. A lot of bass guitars had active pickups. But they had a reputation for being lower dynamic range, which they were at the time. Uh, you couldn't get the level of dynamics out of an active pickup that you could out of a passive. Also, um, it was all just about high output. And a lot of us weren't into that type of voicing. It worked perfectly for a lot of players, especially for metal players where you really need to be out front, where you're looking for that consistency and level. But for a lot of us, we just decided actives weren't our thing. And because of that decision, I think a lot of us forgot some of the really good qualities that active pickups have. For one thing, they're inherently low noise because since they have a preamp that's boosting the signal, there's very few coils on these pickups. And in particular, the Fishmans, they have 48 coils going in one direction, a space, 48 coils going in the other direction. Compare that with the, you know, eight, 9,000 coils that you hear about on most humbucking pickups. This is a very low output pickup. A few of the other things that are just cool about active circuitry in general. The preamp on an active circuit acts as a buffer. And what that really means is that it's kind of a break in the electrical components where they're not influenced by what's connected behind them. Uh, I know you've heard that you don't want to have a guitar cable that's too long because you will start losing highs and eventually some mid frequencies because of the capacitance of the guitar cord if it's too long. Uh, people who have been using big pedal boards for a while know the importance of having a buffered pedal every so often in your chain. Um, just so you don't lose high frequencies. All of that is eliminated in an active circuitry. So there's, there's just inherently some very cool things about active circuits that, and I'll speak for myself here, that I didn't keep up with the evolution of active pickups because I decided 20 years ago that they just weren't my cup of tea. But Fishman has done some very, different things. Uh, for one thing, I got to just touch on, uh, this is not about Fishman pickups, this is about the Epiphone Prophecy SG, but uh, I, I got to touch on this just because it's cool, because I just hadn't researched this for a while. Fishman, instead of coiling wires, they are actually printing very, very tiny wires on thin, thin strips of film. Uh, much like that a computer chip or an IC chip is, the traces are printed directly onto the, you know, onto the circuit board. They found out that they could print each coil individually on a layer, sandwich those layers together, and by doing this, they had just some incredible abilities to be able to tune the magnetic fields because active pickups do not need a really strong magnet since they're relying on a preamp. Um, just a lot of the problems that passive pickups always have to find workarounds and innovative ways to, you know, achieve certain frequency resonances and things that they want. Active pickups and especially Fishman, it seems they've got this nailed. And now I'm going to show you a bit about what I'm talking about. Multi-voice active pickups is one of the things that the fluences are known for. And in particular, uh, what we just heard here, you know, that, that is the active voicing in this. And it's a lot like you would expect, you know, that we've come to expect active pickups to be. Lots of low frequencies, um, slightly compressed perhaps, but not as much as another brand that a lot of us are familiar with. But let's check out what they do with their innovative, uh, I think they call it magnetic mapping technology. We pull up on the tone control here, and now we have a pickup that although it's active, is voiced like a Gibson burst bucker.
as compared to the typical active voicing. Now, let me take the distortion off of here so we can really get a good idea of what's happening here. So. That is the active voicing. Now, with the burst bucker voicing. That's an active pickup. That is pretty cool. And as far as those, you know, losing dynamic range in here. And I mean, I'm hitting that hard enough to put the strings out of tune a little bit. But you got a lot of dynamics. This is not a compressed sounding pickup at all. Third option we've got here, if we pull up on the volume control, we now have a voicing that is, as they call it, similar to a hot single coil. Not what I would call a single coil sound, but a very good and usable voicing along with this. I'm going to quickly go through three of them. I know I'm spending more time on this than I should, but uh, the single coil, the PAF voicing, and their modern active voicing. Three really great sounds out of this. And one of the other things I'm going to point out quickly, benefits of active circuitry. You can do a lot more with the tone control and just tone shaping in general because you don't have to just rely on a high impedance, you know, um, high pass filter. So check this out. You know what usually happens as you roll down the tone control you get to a point where your guitar starts sounding like this. I mean, you still can hear a little bit of high definition in there. It's a lot more than just a roll off. One more thing before I go on, and I'm, I'm rambling too much about this. Active circuitry, no need to worry about any kind of treble bleed. Uh, you, you don't have to fight with 50s wiring or grease, bucker circuit, grease bucket circuits or any of that stuff. You roll down the volume control and it does only what you think it's going to do. That's it, there's no interaction between the volume and tone controls. Now that I've rambled about that, I'm gonna quickly go through the clean sounds on here. You've already heard the three on the bridge. Let's go to the middle position here. And we'll start out with the active, modern active voicing. Okay, and now to the PAF voicing. And to the single coil voicing. Very nice all the way around. Okay, and then up into the neck position here.
Oh, that's very nice just with the active voicing. Okay, and the PAF style voicing, burst bucker. <laughs> Very nice. And the single coil voicing on this. I am not hearing the kind of compression I usually associate with active electronics. So anyway, this is the Epiphone Prophecy SG. Uh, we've got the rest of the line that will be rolling in here throughout the month. Finally, I'm waiting to try all of these out. This is a great guitar, and like I said at the beginning, this is an SG for the 21st century. It is wonderful to feel in your hands, it's wonderful to play on. The sounds are just, they're, they're killer. These are not the typical sounds you would expect out of the SG. Um, although that burst bucker voicing is, it's pretty much nailing the frequency response, but there are some things about, I guess, the, the imperfections of vintage guitars that we just, we love. That's one of the things that we like about them. Um, this is like a high fidelity version of a PAF pickup. Um, you'll either it's going to be for you or it's not. Uh, for me, I'm really digging the sounds out of this guitar. And Epiphone in 2021 continues to impress and amaze me with every guitar that they put out. So if you have any questions about this guitar or any of the other fine guitars you see on our website, give the guys here at moreguitars.com a call or come by and visit our store in Evansville, Indiana. It is a true destination guitar shop. It's incredible. Our inventory will blow you away and you will love talking to the guys and gals here in our shop. So give them a call. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, all of that other happy stuff. Continue to stay safe and we'll see you soon.